A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, 
God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created a universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, the one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me 
because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You know it's serious when Father walks down the stairs to talk to you. (laughs) Friends, today we have the most important feast in our church calendar. The second most important is Easter, but you know what doesn't happen is Easter if we don't have the Incarnation. Because today we celebrate a feast that marks something different, that Christianity can claim that no other faith, no other religion in the history of the world would ever dare to claim and that is the incarnation, that God became man. And the beauty of this is that everything that God became in his humanity, he redeemed. By coming to be a part of his creation, he redeemed all of his creation. And we see this imagery of this new creation through the incarnation. When we talk about John in this beautiful reading from the very first chapter of the Gospel of John, What does he say? The word became flesh and the darkness, the light of the world became, the the word became the light and the light overcomes the darkness, right? We see that same imagery in the beginning of Genesis in the creation of the world. All is darkness until God speaks light into existence. Last night at the vigil mass, we read from the genealogy of Jesus in the gospel of Matthew. The gospel of Matthew starts off with the book of the genealogy of Jesus. And the only other time that phrase is used in all of Scripture is in Genesis chapter 5, when they say the book of the genealogy of Adam. And this is the, the new Adam that we celebrate today. We had the original first man, the original son of man, who brought sin and death into the world. And today we celebrate the new Adam, the new ultimate son of man, who brings life and light and healing into the world. Today is a day above all days. The incarnation, the word made flesh. As I said earlier, in Jesus' humanity, he redeemed every part of what he became, right? That's why it's very important to us that Jesus was not only fully God, but he was fully man. The Bible says that he was like us in all things but sin. What does that mean, Father? Jesus can do anything he wants. Yes, he can. But we also know that Jesus, in his full humanity, experienced the entire spectrum of human experience. Because if he didn't, it wouldn't have been redeemed. What does that mean? Jesus experienced suffering. He experienced pain. He experienced heartache. He experienced love. He experienced heartbreak. He experienced all the spectrum of human emotions and experiences that we experience. Because if he didn't, those experiences couldn't be transformed and redeemed by our Savior. We have a God who came to earth, who condescended to come down from his heavenly throne because he loves us. Not because he needs us, not because this was something he had to do. He did it because he loves us and he wants to do it. He came to earth knowing the suffering and the pain that he would go through, knowing that in the Gospel of John when it talks about how he came to his people and his people accepted him not, he knew that he would be rejected and despised, and he knew that he would suffer and die, but he chose to do it for us. This is the celebration that we celebrate today, that God in his infinite love and mercy would make a decision like that to come and redeem us. So what are you going to do about it? What is this going to do in your life to change it? Because if Jesus redeemed every single part of our humanity, why hasn't he fixed us, right? Why am I not perfect yet? Well, because Jesus always respects my free will. 
And so whatever part of my heart that has not been redeemed is simply because I haven't asked our Lord to redeem it. I haven't given him permission to come into my heart and redeem that part of it, right? We deal with something that Jesus didn't deal with, which is our sinful nature, our concupiscence. Jesus was born without sin. And so we have to continually offer our hearts to the Lord. Say, Jesus, in your incarnation, make yourself at home in my heart. As you brought yourself and were born in this manger on earth, be born again in my heart. Transform my heart. If we give him our permission, he can do amazing things. He can change our lives like he changed the world. We, today is December 25th, 2022. What is it, 2022 years since what? Since Jesus. He changed everything, even our calendars. So let him change your life today. Amen? Amen. Merry Christmas.